But first, the chances of our Anthony Albanese calling an early election today, well, got higher. Because the news got worse. In particular, Telstra today said it will sack up to 2,800 of its workers. That one decision by one company sacking nearly 3,000 people is the equivalent of increasing the number of unemployed Australians by half a percent, when the unemployment rate last month already jumped to 4.1 percent. Now, the kicker in the Telstra sackings is among the reasons given today by its CEO for these sackings. Our industry and the world we are operating in is fast changing. We have new and different competitors. We have rapid advances in technologies happening. Our customer needs continue to evolve. And we have ongoing inflationary and cost pressures. Oh, those cost pressures like inflation. Now, true, Telstra is, as you said, also focusing more uh, on its core business and on using artificial intelligence to help customers fix their problems. I mean, artificial intelligence can go through all this service history, find patterns and problems and some of it and sum it all up in a, sec a sentence or two and all that in a matter of, well, how long does it take? You know, 30 seconds? Less? Uh, AI is a big job killer. But Telstra is also struggling against the rising costs we're all facing. Inflation, interest rates, power prices. And opposition leader Peter Dutton today pounced. As uh, the Telstra CEO pointed out, uh, it's a tough economic environment out there at the moment and it's deteriorating. Uh, we saw today from AEMO, the energy regulator, uh, a very stark warning to the government that unless you get the energy picture right, we're going to end up with higher electricity costs and blackouts and brownouts. No, oh, yes, brownouts as well. The Australian energy market operator did indeed just warn that the danger of power blackouts and brownouts next summer just got even higher in Victoria and New South Wales because this supposed transition to wind and solar power to save the planet is not going anywhere as smoothly as Labor predicted. Who's <laughs> surprised? Now, this report says the transmission wires we need aren't being built fast enough, nor are the wind and solar plants who supposedly re place all the coal-fired power stations Labor is helping to drive out of business. But Energy Minister Chris Bowen today was in total denial. Well, this is the process working. This is working? I mean, remember power blackouts and electricity shortages, they really hurt manufacturers and, and other companies like Telstra. And that's what we're seeing. But there's Bowen saying, well, don't worry, don't worry. Uh, this warning from uh, Emo, it, it just means that people are going to fix things because uh, we did go through last summer all right, didn't we? Lots of people said there were going to be blackouts this last summer. Uh, Peter Dutton and Ted O'Brien wandered around saying there were going to be lights going out and causing all sorts of uh, fear in the community. There were no blackouts caused by a lack of electricity. Uh, we had issues with cyclones and transmission towers falling over. That can happen to anyone. I find it scary that this bloke is in charge of the nation's electricity. For one, those blackouts were caused in part, not just because of a storm, but by having a power supply that's not stable enough, in Victoria at least, to handle that storm blowing over some power lines. Wind power crashed at the same time as well. Couldn't handle it. Bang. As for avoiding other blackouts last summer, well, one reason is simple. The summer was mild. Melbourne, for instance, didn't have a single day in January or December either that was over 35 degrees. And that means, of course, less air conditioning was being used. But now EMO's warning that this safety margin between the power we have and the power consumers might want is even less than last year. The danger is higher. And to get us through it, it's going to have to pay some manufacturers your money not to use electricity. We've got now a supply of non-electricity. What a farce. What was it again that Bowen said? Well, this is the process working. So here's what's happening. The economy's in trouble, the power system is crumbling and more people will lose their jobs. And all of that's likely to get worse over the next year. I don't think interest rates are going to come tumbling down fast. So when would you hold an election if you were Anthony Albanese? Would you wait until next May when it's clear that the government's plans are not working? Or would you do it rather sooner before voters wake up to it all? 